Welcome back to Quantum Code, I'm Martin. In this video, I'll show you how to create a dissolve effect using visual shaders in Godot. As a result, the enemies will disappear and show the score when they die. Let's go right into it. Back in Godot, let's open the enemy scene. You can change the body position to 5 and minus 30. It will be better for the spawning enemy, so it will be exactly at the same um, at the same position. Then let's create a new scene. It will be a 2D scene. Let's call it dead enemy. And we can save it right away in the scenes folder. Now we want to add the enemy animated sprite and the eyes. A way to do it is to right click our main node to select merge from scene. Then select the enemy scene and select the body node. Hit OK. And here you have the animated sprite with the eyes sprite on it. It's a way to duplicate your node to other scenes. We will also need a label node to show the score of the player and a twin node to animate the shader effect and last an animation player node which we will use to animate the, the text the label node um, over the head of the enemy. First, let's set up this label node. So click on it, click on custom fonts, select new dynamic font, click on it. Under the font section, we need to change the font data. Select uh, in your uh, file system, select assets, font, and drag and drop crush.ttf to font data. We can type something like one, two, three to test our text. Back to our custom font, we can change the settings. Let's put a size of 25, an outline size of one. Uh, we can change the outline color to a almost full red. Uh, we also need to go under extra spacing and change the character spacing to three. So our character are a little bit more visible. Then you can change the font color and the custom colors. Select the font color and enable it. We'll leave it to a black color. Then we can close the custom font parameters. And on top of the label node, we need to change the align uh, values to center, so for align and vertical align. Then let's move the text here. We can expand its size and place it at the middle. Now if we change our value to 1, it will be in the middle and if we continue to add numbers, it will be still centered. So this is good. This is all for the label node. Then we need to animate this node. So let's go in animation player, create a new animation. We'll call it score. By the way, I will change the animation player name to text animation. Let's select the label node. Go under rect on control and just add a track for the position. The text will start at this position and it will go up to something like that. So you can then add a key. Then we will change the visibility of the text. So go under visibility and add a new track for the modulate. At the beginning, it will be transparent. So just select a value and put it to zero. Then at 0 0.2, it will be fully visible. So we can insert a key and this time it will be full white. And at the end of the animation, we want it to be transparent again. 
we can play our animation to see the result and this is looking good next step is to create our dissolve shader next step is to create our dissolve shader effect I've already uploaded a video on how to create um, this dissolve effect on a sprite so I will um, leave you a link to this video in the um, in the description I recommend you to check it out if you want to understand how um, it is working I will recreate this effect um, right now so you can still watch the video I will not explain um, how I do it but you can still follow what I am doing and and do the same Our shader is now ready. So we have um, two shader params, the glow color and the dissolve rate. If I change the glow color to something like almost a full red, you can see we have this nice effect on the side. And the dissolve rate will uh, make the player, the enemy appear or disappear. As you can see, there is still one issue. The eyes are not following this effect. They are not disappearing, but we can fix this really easily. You go under body, select the eye sprite and just under material, use parent material. Now the eyes disappear with the enemy. Cool. Now let's go on the scripting part. So select your dead enemy node and add a script. We'll need two variables, one called twin, one called scoring. The twin variable will be um, the value of our twin node. So it will go, for example, uh, from minus one to one, and we will store the value on our twin variable. And the scoring variable is a Boolean to know if 
yes or no, we want to show the text because when the enemy is hit by a ball, that means the player will earn a point. So we want to have a new score appearing on top of the enemy. But if the enemy um, is dying because he hits the player and so he damaged the player, you don't want the score to be updated and you don't want the score to appear here. So first of all, we will um, set the, la the label text on our ready function. So label.text equal str of one for the moment. We will um, create something in the next tutorial which will allow us to store our score and have it uh, updated. But for the moment, we will just put one. Then we will use our twin node to change the value of our um, dissolve effect. So we'll do a twin.interpolate property. Self. We will change the twin variable. It will go from minus one to one. Um, it will have a duration of 0 0.35 and we will use a linear transformation and you can select is in it will not change anything with the linear transformation then we can call twin that starts to start our effects right away one last thing, we need to change the um, shader param under the process function. So at each frame, we want our body material. And we want to set its shader param. The name of the shader param is uh, this all right. And we want it to be equal to twin value. Now, at the beginning of our dead enemy thing, when the dead enemy thing is added, we want um, to show the score or not, as I explained, depending on the scoring variable. So we will create a start function, which will use the variable scoring. And we'll do a self.scoring equal scoring. So this uh, takes this value, which is here, and give it to our variable self that scoring is this variable. Then we can test if scoring, we want to play the animation. So we will call text animation dot play. And the animation name is call. Hit control S. And then we'll go under our enemy script. And we need to instantiate the dead enemy scene uh, when the enemy dies. Let's add a constant. We'll call it dead enemy. And it will be equal to preload. And here we will preload our en dead enemy scene. The function kill enemy is when the enemy dies. So here we will add a new variable called dead enemy equal to our const dead enemy dot instance. Then we will add it to our tree. So get parent that add child and we'll add the child dead enemy then we'll set its position so dead enemy that global position equal to global position as it will have exactly the same position as the dying enemy and remember we need to call the start function with our parameter scoring so now we can use a we can change a little bit the kill enemy function. It will take a variable named scoring. So now on body entered, 
uh, still on the enemy script on body enter if player in body name that means the um, the enemy damaged the player so we don't want to show the text so we just pass false we also need to set this up in the ball script um, and the on body entered if enemy in body name that means the enemy needs to die because he has been hidden by a ball we will call body that kill enemy and we will pass true as parameter as the player killed killed this enemy and so we want to see the score hit control s now we can play the game If I shoot at an enemy, it will disappear and we will show the score. But if I continue to shoot, as you can see, the old enemies are still appearing. So there is an issue. To change this, you can select the body node. And under the material, under resource, you want to enable lo local to scene. So this will create independent shaders for each enemy node. But there is still an issue because we don't um, we don't free the dead enemy nodes even we don't, when we don't use them anymore because all the animations are uh, finished. Um, to solve this, we can use signals. So let's go in the twin node and connect the twin completed to our dead enemy uh, node. Next, we can connect the text animation. Uh, animation finished, you connect it same to the dead enemy node. Now if the twin ended up, we want still to check that we are not scoring. So that means we are not showing the text and in this case we can queue free. But if we are also showing the text, we don't want to queue free when the text animation didn't uh, end. In this case, we want to queue free only when the text animation finished. Here we can just do a test to check the anim name. So if anim name equal score, which is the name of our animation, we will queue free. We can play the game again. So when I shoot at an enemy, I can see the score. And I can see the enemy disappear and there are not uh, all the enemies appearing. And also if an enemy comes and hit the player, he will disappear but not show the score. So this is perfect. We also um, free all the nodes so we don't have performances issue. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, uh, check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell so you get notified when the next video is out. Also, you can leave us any feedback or any question in the comment section. We will answer quickly. See you.